Thank you for tuning in. As I've covered on my channel many times before, uh, my current mapping workflow. I've done a lot with fixed wing, multi-rotor, and I've just shared over time just the evolution of my experimentation as it relates to getting good aerial imagery. So in this video, I want to share kind of what my latest workflow is. It's just something I started messing around with the other day. And at the same time, I want to share a little bit about how you take your imagery into tiles in a tiled format. So I'll demonstrate this flight from about two weeks ago. You can see that now we have updated aerial imagery of our high school stadium. You can see the current version of aerial maps provided by Google, Apple, and others very out of date. And then you can see this current flyover with the imagery that I shot with the Phantom 4. The first thing we need to do, obviously, is acquire the imagery. I've used many different tools in the past, as well as some DIY stuff. With the Phantom 4, I've really been enjoying this DJI Ground Station Pro. It's free and very robust piece of software. You can see here my screenshot of just the area mapped out before I fly with a bunch of different parameters, but the user interface is fairly intuitive and it allowed me to acquire 80 or so photos of this flight. And the flight took, I think it was about seven to 10 minutes. So once that was done, I was able to take that imagery and load it into PhotoScan Pro. Here the images are loaded into PhotoScan Pro. It picks up the GPS EXIF data. The workflow is pretty simple. You go in, align photos, run through that process. Then I built the tiled model and you can sort of see that right here, the 3D model. And what I'm ultimately doing is getting a quick path to be able to build the ortho mosaic. So go through all that. And I will mention on the channel, I've covered many different tools in the past, obviously PhotoScan, Pix4D, and one of my favorites, Open Drone Map. Well, in this instance, I was looking to get something pretty quick. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time. I was in the air for about 10 to 15 minutes. The process with PhotoScan Pro, going through these steps took roughly an hour. And then the next thing I'll show is creating the tiled imagery so that you can load that on a Google map. PhotoScan Pro gives us a TIFF output. You can see a little thumbnail here. It's a 530 megabyte file. Everything's stitched together, very seamless. You can see the results here. Just beautiful, beautiful imagery. I'm always impressed what you can get when you get a bunch of aerial nadir photos stitched together. You can see the resolution is, is quite impressive. So that being said, this imagery is now one big file in a TIFF. And let me just demonstrate the GDAL tools to you guys because there's something that I've talked about on the channel before. I love them and continue to use them. So I'll go into my ortho photo where my project is. You can see there's the Tiger Stadium. TIFF file and I can run a command called GDAL info, give it the TIFF file and you can see that it will spit out some metadata info, the coordinate system, the bounding area, the different bands for your colors. And what we'll do now is we'll take this ortho photo and we'll create a bunch of tiles. And it sounds like a lot of work, but the GDAL tools will make that very easy. And just so you're aware, these GDAL tools are open source they're the geospatial data abstraction library. There is a Mac build, which is what I used. I just downloaded the complete version and added it to my command line path so that I can run these commands, but definitely check them out. The other thing I want to talk about before we actually run the command is what happens when that's done. So I'm going to pull up my developer tools. That's generally under view developer and developer tools. I'll toggle that and I'll bring it back. So what's really cool about what goes on here is let me just switch to uh, October 30th, 2016. You can see over here, I'll go to my network tab and switch. And what happens is for each one of these different layers, there are tiles. There are Google Map tiles, which are the native tiles that you see over here. They're, they're presented together seamlessly. And then here's our imagery overlaid. And if you look at it, you can see the information that is sliced up. So the beauty of the GDAL tools is there's a script called GDAL to tiles. 
and it takes care of all of this for us. I just specify a zoom level and it will create our different tile sets at different zoom layers. So for example, if I zoom in, we have a whole set of different tiles. Here is our tile and here is the Google Map tile. So let me show you now how we'll create those. I'm back at the command line with the GDAL tools right here. This is the command we ran earlier. I'm showing you the finder over here just so you'll see that a folder with a bunch of subfolders will be created. So tigerstadium.tiff is the file we're interested in. We'll see it right here. So I'll run the GDAL to tiles, Python script. I'll give it a zoom le level. In my case, I've been doing zooms from 15 to 20. So we'll say 15 through 20. I'll specify tigerstadium.tiff and, and GDAL to tiles is running. You can see it created this Tiger Stadium. See that it has a folder called 20, which specifies the zoom level 20. Once it's done with that, you'll see it also do the other tile views. Okay, it looks like it's almost done. We have 15 through 20. The beautiful thing is we could stop here, right? We could say, okay, here are the different versions. I'll open the open layers version, which has a few different base layers. And you can see that is our TIFF now sliced up into many little tiles. There is a bit of transparency. You can change that through the code. I won't get into that right now, but you can see I can go to Google Satellite. You'll see there's a little bit of offset here nothing to be worried about. This isn't survey grade. This is more just for visual purposes. And you have Google Terrain. You can show and hide the layer that we just created. So that all comes with the GDAL to tile script. What I normally do is then take this folder of all these subfolders, upload it to a server. And in my case, I have a bunch of different dates with folders associated with these dates that give me imagery for the latest flight. A lot of people ask me why I would bother going to this trouble. As you guys know, I feel like it's important personally for me to understand what's going on. I could take that imagery that I acquired from DJI Ground Station Pro, uploaded it to someone's cloud, and then magically had a map, which is great, and I appreciate that. But for me personally, I have this imagery hosted on my own server. I'm sort of in control of it, whereas if you're uploading to someone else's cloud, there's always the question of who owns the data and all of that. And I just really think it's important to understand these type of things. So that's my little spiel on why I, I do this. I hope you guys find it useful. I'll continue to share this workflow. I'll do another one that incorporates Open Drone Map. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.